Hey hey guys, Adam here with another educational video. In this video I'll explain how to calculate turn performance, and then I'll go over flaps and their interesting effect on turn performance, and in what situation you should be extending flaps. I'll be using some notions that I've talked about in my aircraft wings video, so you should watch that video before this one. Without further ado, let's flap right into it. Turn performance can be separated into two categories, turn radius and turn time. Let's start with a mathematical demonstration for turn radius. Bear with me, it's simple enough that a toddler could do it. To begin, any object that moves on a circular trajectory requires a centripetal force that acts on it to keep it on the circular trajectory. For example, the sun's gravity keeps the planets on their orbit, and tire friction pushes back on a turning car. To turn, the aircraft must first roll to the desired bank angle, and then increase angle of attack to increase lift, and the horizontal component of lift is the centripetal force, and that's what makes the aircraft turn. For now, we'll assume that the bank angle is essentially 90 degrees, so lift is equal to centripetal force. Lift is equal to 1 half times air density times speed squared times wing area times lift coefficient. Lift coefficient is just how much lift a wing can produce per unit of area. Centripetal force is mass times speed squared divided by the radius of the circle. Since they are equal, let's put the two equations together. Speed is on both sides of the equation, so they cancel out. If we isolate turn radius, we find that the radius is equal to 2 times mass divided by the product of wing area, air density, and lift coefficient. To find the minimum turn radius, we'll use the seal max of the aircraft, which we can find in the flight model data files. The speed of the aircraft is nowhere to be found in the turn radius equation. This means that the turn radius is independent of speed. One decently sized caveat is that it assumes the pilot and the plane can achieve the required G-load or elevator deflection at high speed. At least in War Thunder, control stiffening will increase your turn radius if you go fast enough. Turn time, which is the time it takes for the aircraft to complete a 360 degree circle with its turn radius, is more complicated to predict since it depends on a few parameters that aren't explicit in the files such as propeller efficiency and wing drag at high angles of attack. However, it's clear that the most important parameters are power, weight, wing area, and induced drag. Higher power and lower induced drag allow a higher sustained turn speed to complete the turn faster, and a, and a lower weight and higher wing area reduces the turn radius, which makes the perimeter of the circle smaller so less distance has to be traveled, which improves turn time. Let's see how the equation stacks up against testing. Since the aircraft must produce enough vertical lift to counterweight, the bank angle will be lower than 90 degrees, which will increase the turn radius. A bank angle of 72 degrees is assumed, which increases the turn radius by 5%. For the P-51D30, the turn radius calculated with the equation is 247 meters, compared to around 256 meters that you see on the WTRTI overlay. The main reason why the theoretical radius is lower than the test radius is because the elevator is producing downforce to pitch the plane to turn, reducing the overall lift and increasing the turn radius to the value you see in the test. As for sustained turn time, it's 17.3 seconds as shown on the overlay. Now let's analyze the effect of flaps on turn performance. Theoretically, Flaps increase the seal max by increasing the camber of the wing, which deflects more air downwards, but they also increase drag. Do flaps really improve turn performance? Let's find out. I'll start by using combat flaps and I'll let the speed stabilize again to compare turn radius and turn time. As predicted, the turn radius did indeed shorten to 245 meters, but the turn time increased to 18 seconds due to the increase in drag, which had a stronger effect on turn time than the decrease in perimeter. For the D-30's case at least, flaps decrease turn radius but increase sustained turn time. As landing flaps are used, turn radius continues to reduce slightly while turn time increases to 20.7 seconds. The turn radius got tighter by 4% for combat flaps and 10% for landing flaps, while turn time increased by 4% for combat and 20% for landing flaps, a hefty price to pay for a tighter turn. Let's test another plane, the P-38L Lightning, which has better flaps. The P-51 has plane flaps, while the P-38 has more complicated Fowler flaps, which should improve its flap performance. 
These flaps extend rearwards to increase wing area in addition to rotating to add camber. Again we do the same sustained turn test with no flaps and record the turn radius and turn time which are 298 meters and 18.8 seconds respectively. Notice that the turn radius is larger than the P51s when both aren't using flaps. With combat flaps, the P38's turn radius shortens to 247 meters, while the turn time reduces to 18.1 seconds. A P38 with combat flaps has a similar turn radius and turn time as a P51 with combat flaps. With landing flaps, the P38 turns much tighter than the P51, even with landing flaps, which shows the P38's great flaps. It goes from being significantly outturned by the P51 when clean to significantly outturning the P51 when landing flaps are used. The conclusion is that flap performance differ greatly from aircraft to aircraft, so you need to know your flaps. The turn radius equation says that the turn radius is proportional to air density, which reduces as altitude increases. This reduction in density affects all aircraft equally, so practically two aircraft which have the same turn radius at sea level will also be equal at 5 km. However, the aircraft that conserves engine power better at higher altitude will have a better turn time and will clearly outturn an aircraft that does poorly at high alt, such as a P-38 against a Tempest. The last thing to test is the effect of flaps on high speed turns and the P-51 D-30 is the ideal test subject because of its high flap rip speed. First, the P-51 will turn without flaps starting at 550 km per hour IAS until it reaches sustained turn speeds and will compare best turn times and turn radius to the same test but with combat flaps. Here are the results. This is a graph of the speed as a function of time for the, for the clean P-51 and the combat flap P-51. As predicted, the flap P-51 loses speed significantly faster than the clean P-51 and has a tighter turn radius. This is a graph of the turn time as a function of time for the clean P-51 and the combat flap P-51. The P-51 with flaps has the initial advantage in turn time, but the clean P-51 catches up shortly and gets a better turn time as speed is bled off. So, we just learned that using flaps doesn't necessarily improve turn performance. Using flaps in the wrong situation will bleed your speed and can get you killed, and not using them when you should have can also get you killed. Flaps are useful when you want to simultaneously slow down and turn tighter, for example in scissors. This is an example from my last P38K video. I combined flap use with a throttle drop to make a slow but better turning BF109 overshoot. The situations where you shouldn't constantly use flaps are when in a sustained dogfight or when facing multiple enemies. You should pop flaps sparingly and only when necessary, for example to get a shot or to dodge. That concludes the video. Smash like if you learned something. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and stay useful.